welcome to 13 nights of halloween today we're gonna review and rank my favorite nightmare on elm street movies stay with me Hi guys, today we're going to be going over my favorite, most endeared, if that's a word, horror franchise, Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy for Life. Uh, you don't have to worry about all the trailers for all the movies will be linked down below so you can go see for yourself if you want to watch it or refresh your memory. And I'm also linking my letterboxed. Um, ranked list of all the Nightmare on Elm Street movies so you can check my notes as well as the order I rank them in if you're so interested and you can always add me and I'll add you if you use Letterboxd. Frost I Hate is my name. So without further ado, who who is he? <laughs> One, two, Freddy's coming for you. If that song terrified you when you were younger and brings this cozy feeling to your heart now that you're not scared anymore, you're in the right place. Freddy has everything. And today, sorry, it's probably going to be a long um, video because I have a lot to say about the franchise. Mm. Okay, I don't even know where to start, man. Okay, let's start with the beginning. I'll go, I'll start with my ranking and there will be timestamps down below. You can flip flop, do whatever you want because there will be more coming at the end. But um, I'll go from lowest to highest. Take a moment. And let me know which one is your favorite and which installment of the franchise do you think will be my top one? My favorite, that. Okay, done that, let's go. I will start with a dishonorable mention, which is Nightmare on Elm Street, the series. That was horrendous. That out of the way, zero stars, it doesn't exist, I'm ignoring it. Which I hoped to do for other ones. Um, for, but in total, Freddy has appeared in nine movies. They are movies, I wish they were films, but they're not really. And um, so in ninth place with half a star, I have the 1985 Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge. And that was directed by Jack Shoulder. In it, we basically follow Jesse, who moved into Nancy's house. And then he finds Nancy's diary and Kruger kind of starts to take over him. That's the basic premise. And uh, why do I like it? I mean, let's start with the only good thing about this one, in my humble opinion. Well, one of two only good things about this one. First one is because it actually turned Nightmare on Elm Street into a franchise. Because without a sequel, there would have been a franchise. So I'm thankful. Thank you. You know, Freddy's Revenge. Now let's see why I don't like it. First of all, this is, most of his movies, it, they are 80s movie. Most of 80s movies don't automatically age well, let's put it this way. But this one not only aged very poorly, it should have never been acceptable, period. There is an underlying theme, in my opinion, of uh, demonizing homosexuality, which I'm not here for. And I think that Jesse's implied bisexuality should have been handled so differently. 
it could have been a great social commentary at a time unfortunately it was not the deaths are underwhelming and uh freddy was the best thing about this and talking about deaths for each one i will go over and let you know what is my favorite death and what is my favorite freddy's one-liner of the movie if applicable so for the first movies the one-liner wasn't really a big part of it so i don't have one for this one really nothing that was memorable but for the death it was really hard to pick one because they quite blatantly sucked i went with the poo scene however the poo party's killing spree because it's one of the very few times freddy actually goes on a killing spree so by default that took the cake next with one star <laughs> another one that i have very big opinions on and i'll go over more later but we have a nightmare on elm street 2010 directed by samuel bayer in nath place it follows nancy who lives on elm street and she's and her group of friends start being um haunted by this very creepy burn old man with a dirty ripped off sweater and that has noise for fingers and he comes in their dreams and if they die in their dreams they die in real life in case you didn't know that's the premise of a nightmare on elm street chronologically this thing dares call itself a remake uh but i don't even know if this is a remake or a reboot uh it took aspects of the original that were so great and ruined them including freddy's debut or like the first scene where he comes and haunts the first person slash kill them like in this one it was freaking underwhelming in my humble opinion the places they went with the story was very uncanon in my opinion as well everything here i'm gonna stop saying my opinion because everything here is my opinion because opinion i have okay and uh what else they copied quite a few sentences or iconic scenes that didn't need improvement and they didn't outdo them it was actually worse and the one thing they should have copied they didn't which was the, the storyline and again freddy's entrance good things about all now i'll let you know why it actually got one star instead of zero it is visually stunning the acting is on point i really loved the acting of most people the some of the special effects are really good and i really do appreciate the darker tone that they gave out nightmare on elm street and the makeup was on point um freddy really looked like a burn victim so that's the positive i went it there now for uh the one-liner no he copied some of freddy so that's not original and they weren't Funny, the delivery was very dark i wouldn't necessarily say that there was even like one liner and the deaths were all horrible by default i'll pick one that was kind of cool and an improvement on the original which was nancy mom's death i really enjoyed the nice through the eyes and the mirror scene if you know you know and that's it for this poor excuse of a remake and i'll have actually that's not it because i have more on it later but let's keep ranking in seventh place with two stars i have new nightmare the 1994 directed by wes craven let's start with the positives i really enjoyed the inside jokes there were in here if you don't know a new nightmare it, it was i think the first nightmare on elm street directed by wes craven since the debut it was his baby 
and uh, this is a very meta we see real life so Wes Craven is in it the directors uh, Robert England that plays Freddy and Heather Letterkamp is in it as herself as well a fictionalizing version of herself so we see the actress being haunted in dreams by Freddy and we don't know what's going on so basically it's an extremely meta movie that had everything to go right but don't forget that this is 1994 so it's quite a while ago and I think that Wes Craven had the right idea it just didn't execute it well this is not a memorable movie for me it's it would probably rank below Freddy's Revenge if it wasn't for the fact of they have the inside jokes and that in my humble opinion this was a dress rehearsal for Scream which is another franchise I adore so I think Wes Craven had this idea of madness brought into this movie. It was a good start, but it didn't quite get there. But then he fixed everything that was wrong with it in two years later brought screen. So convince me otherwise, but in my opinion, this is what it is. And just for being the dress rehearsal for Scream, I'm giving it two stars. My favorite death in this movie was again very very underwhelming like the deaths were horrible in this one I guess you see a theme right but anyway Julie's death in the hospital it was an homage to Tina's iconic death so I chose that and um, I can't remember any one liner so we go with none things are getting better now okay let's go to my number six in sixth place with three stars i have freddy's dead the final nightmare 1991 is the sixth movie in chronological order and it was directed by rachel talale um we getting here in like the It is, let's be honest, it's not the best. Um, everything past the third one, in my opinion, in the main, in the first round of the franchise, kind of jumped the shark. You can see they were trying to capitalize on the, you know, popularity and it shows but they all have their amazing components into it and the one thing that saves this movie for me so it's in sixth place is the fact that i mean it's a bit of a spoiler but this movie has been out there forever if you haven't watched it it's not like we watch slashers for the plot lines but anyway we meet Freddy's daughter in this one and not only that this movie what I adored about it and like I really loved is the fact that we get inside into Freddy's upbringing this movie did a really good job in humanizing Freddy Krueger the man and sharing with us his history of bullying and abuse that led him on the down, downward spiral that culminated in him becoming a child killer. And killer is a word here, I'll get on, on it later. And his relationship with his daughter was quite nuanced as well. And the inside in the past, I mean, I'm not justifying Freddy, he was this people man, he, kid, he killed kids. He killed someone in his family but he was always protective of his daughter at least that's how i took it he was a good dad as good of a dad he could be and i think the ending was very cathartic and i don't think freddie would have been disappointed to be honest in that end and uh that's my opinion that's why i got three stars and out of the three stars is the lowest ranking one 
for my favorite kill I have to go with Spencer it's the video game if you know you know it is one of my the cheekiest kills he's ever done and it's like a memorable one for me for sure it's so memorable I thought it was like I thought it was part of my number one Freddy Krueger movie and my favorite one-liner is not as strong but I loved when he went grounded <laughs> so in fifth place I have the chronologically fourth movie in the franchise A Nightmare on Elm Street 4 The Dream Master, Master from 1988 directed by Rennie Harlan in here Freddy is resurrected he comes back to life finishes killing all the Elm Street kids and we go from there Kristen uh, has a very unique ability of pulling people into her dream brings Alice in contact with Freddy through there and um, now Freddy is attacking Alice and her friends because he got the taste for it do I love this movie no but I binge on it every time I watch any A Nightmare on Elm Street some really amazing things in it this movie contains one of my favorite kills and one-liners of all time like top rank I appreciated the passing of the torch to Alice it was a somewhat logical way of continuing with the franchise so I really enjoyed that and and dare I say this is one of my absolute favorite ways Freddy was killed I really enjoyed like his death in this movie uh, but now why did it with these many things why didn't it do it for me and I have an answer for you casting I adore adore Patricia Arquette I watch everything that she's in I don't know why but I really love her and she is my all-time favorite final girl she is Kristen period so I don't know for what reason she wasn't recasting her role and nothing wrong with the actress that got her role but it, it was actually everything wrong with the actress that got her role like she couldn't act she didn't bring life she she's not Kristen and because of that the chemistry between Kristen Kincaid and Joey that was supposed to be so important in this beginning and this passing of the torch just felt completely flat so in my opinion it's a movie that started wrong and then I couldn't let go of that but I really enjoy the other aspects but that's why I have love-hate relationship with this one but I didn't mention the one-liners and I didn't mention the kills and they are in my opinion iconic do you want to take a guess what my favorite kill in this one is Debbie that cockroach kill is prime 80s campy slasher it is so good and my favorite one-liner believe it or not is one sec face I don't know I just like that it's so inappropriate and so unsettling that it's iconic and good in my opinion and uh, I didn't like it but I loved it <laughs> no you can see we get in there we get in there in fourth place also with three stars I have an Nightmare on Elm Street the dream child a 1989 movie directed by Stephen Hopkins and is the fifth movie in the series so is the direct sequel to the one I just mentioned so in it we follow Alice from the previous movie she's pregnant and Freddy is so weak that he uses her unborn son as a way to get and kill other people because the baby is always dreaming um I have like a hit and miss uh, relationship with Lisa Wilcox that plays Alice I I never warmed up to her but she her acting is much better in this one so that's part of the reason I enjoy it more second and there's this shower scene that was amazing 
and child me tried to replicate it at home and I got in trouble because Freddie made me do it doesn't cut as an excuse. If you had asked me when I first watched the movies, this would probably be one of my favorites. I really loved it. But each time I watch it, it just went down a little bit on my ranking because other ones were better. But I really liked the background on Freddy because once you get a background, you know a character is not going anywhere. So I really appreciated that. And uh, his background is just so freaking like sad. I honestly, I felt really bad for him after watching this. And sometimes, you know, you have that guilty pleasure, you let your morals all the wind and you really like a betty. But this was, I think the first time I remember actually empathizing with a villain, understanding them. And even though I don't condone, obviously, the things they did, but I felt bad and sorry for him. And that's when he became my Freddy it was with this movie. So it does hold a special place in my heart. And in a way, I feel that movies three, four, and five, they kind of do have a tie-in. And the nurse in this one was a perfect way of... Um, doing that so it's almost like a mini trilogy in the grand scheme of the franchise i mean again my opinion but um i really like that so my favorite kill in this one is mark mark with the comic book Kelly. I thought it was very nice and original and you can really see they were playing with what they can do with visual effects at the time and my favorite one-liner is actually not Freddy's, is Jacob's. I loved when he goes, cools out, Kruger. Oh. I mean, sorry, Freddy, but he lose this one. Now we get into the good ones. So in number three, I know I will surprise you. I actually did surprise myself quite a bit because unlike the previous one the fourth i really disliked it the first time i watched it but every time i watch it it goes up in my rank and that is the quote unquote seventh uh movie in the franchise the freddy versus jason directed by ronnie Yu from 2003. it's not technically a nightmare on elm street but it has Freddy, so I'll go with it. And I said technically number seven because the first six movies are a clear timeline, but then from the six, you branch out into two. One of them is the new nightmare. That could be the seventh, the meta one, because it wraps everything up and it celebrates the 10th anniversary of the first one, but it ends there. And then you have Freddy vs. Jason that also came right after his final death, which was in the sixth movie. And it can be a seventh, but it's also the end of the line. I'll leave at the end. You can screenshot if you want, like, a kind of timeline for his movies. But uh, for this one, Freddy vs. Jason, Freddy is too, too weak. He really wants to come back. His thirst for blood is more than ever. And he doesn't know how to come back to life. He wants to go back to Elm Street. He has a great idea of getting the help of Jason. Because why not? You know there'll be a lot of kills. The first time I watched it, I disliked it because I don't really like Jason and he killed more people than Freddy in here. He had mostly cooler deaths. And um, Freddy was not a clear winner. That's why the first time I watched it, I absolutely hated it. Not to mention it is very teen slasher. I love 2000s teen slashers and this is very much one of them. So, you know, it's cheesy, it's camping, the acting is atrocious. 
except for Jason Reeder, Catherine Isabel Murray, and Brendan Fletcher. They kind of brought their game, and of course, Freddie, Robert England. But other than that, it's like, but why do I rank it so high now? First of all, it has an awesome soundtrack. The kills are on point. The wit is there. It's back. And it is a 2000s teen slasher, which I like. And more than anything, I loved it because it brought my Freddy back. The Freddy that I hadn't seen in a very, very, very long time without its cheese, its sense of humor, its wit. Freddy was back in more ways than one. So for this reason, it keeps going higher and higher and higher on my list. But I think it reached a plateau. And I don't know if I mentioned it before, I gave it three and a half stars because there are things I can't just look past. But I really enjoyed. My favorite killer was Mark with the face slashing and the branding. Was that a really strong kill? No, but it was Freddy's best. I will make an honorable mention, and unfortunately, I'll have to give this to Jason. The best killer kill in the whole movie was Jason's, unfortunately, and it was a uh, tray. Uh, that was a cool kill, and um, Trey was an asshole, so he got what he deserved. Unfortunately, he got it from Jason. The scene where Freddy and Jason are fighting, it was so funny. I really loved it. And that's where my favorite one line comes from. Toot! Um, fortunately, fortunately, it doesn't matter. There's another one liner I like because it has been repeated in other movies, including the remake. And it has been become a kind of cultural reference, pop culture reference so i have to give it to lori for saying welcome to my world bitch sorry what was that but anyway so that's another iconic line that comes for it now 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 we get to my top two i will let you know that they both have five stars and if you've been doing the math, it's either going to be the first one, Nightmare on Elm Street from 1984, or Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors from 1987. So, which one of these two do you think is my number one? And which one do you think will be my number two? Which one is yours, by the way? So obviously, once I tell you what my second one is, I will automatically will be telling you what the first one is. I think that's the downfall of ranking lists, but it is what it is, yes? So this might surprise you by my second place, even though they both have five stars. Oh, my Nightmare on Elm Street franchise is a Nightmare on Elm Street the OG, directed by Wes Craven. I really love this movie. I love what Nightmare on Elm Street did for the slasher movies, for the horror, for um, the franchise. It was fresh. It was original, like a dream killer. It brought some sort... You, you can see the seeds in this one of bringing... I know 80s slashes are campy in itself, but this was intentionally campy and intentionally witty and we have this villain that you kind of like to like and he was smart some of those killers are not smart <coughs> jason <coughs> jason he was smart and he speaks and he has his personality and he's very much of a character not just someone who kills them kids for nightmare on elm street my favorite one-liner is, this is good. And hands down, my favorite kill is Tina. I know this franchise is not for everyone, but in my opinion, the human is fantastic and groundbreaking. He is my favorite villain of all time. And for a 1980s movie, it aged quite well. The practical effects were mm, 
on point to the point that they don't look all choppy like some of the ones that try to do the special effects. I don't know. There is nothing not to love about this movie. So you ask me, why is it not my favorite one? Because I love the other one more. In my opinion, nothing in this franchise comes close. Well, maybe a Nightmare on Elm Street does, but to a Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors, directed by Chuck Russell. In it has been years and years and years. Freddy has it again. Nancy comes back. She is a psychologist in this dream clinic. And there are some people that are having some dream issues. Let's call it that. And uh, we just go from there. It's the first time we meet Kristen, which is my favorite final girl of all times, like I mentioned. Uh, all of the deaths are iconic. This is um, the movie that introduced the one-liners and they're all extremely memorable, including, sorry kid, I don't believe in fairy tales. And what's wrong, Joy? Feeling a little tongue-tied? But um, not only that, okay? There is the best one-liner of all the franchise. And this one was um, improvised by Robert England. It was supposed to be something else. That was good too. But it turned into this masterpiece pearl of one-liners. And um, if you're a Freddy fan, you must know it. But nothing brings me more pleasure to hear than welcome to primetime bit. I don't know, I love the one-liners so much. That death was amazing too. As amazing as all the other deaths in here. As a whole, this movie has my favorite deaths. I like them all. And amazing one-liners, the best ever. So it wins for the ensemble of both. You know what my favorite one-liner is, but no. Uh, my favorite death is the puppet if you know you know that was like amazing i love everything about this movie it's not only my favorite uh, nightmare on elm street it's also my favorite one of my favorite horrors of all time it just warms my heart i don't know what that says about me but it does and i know i have a lot to say when i talk about freddy so i apologize i promise all the other videos are going to be much shorter, most of them, but I can't not talk about Freddy. And now I'll finish this with, if I was to pitch a revival, okay? Here's um, a franchise I love and what I want for its future. Let's start with 2010, okay? Copying a title and some death scenes and some dialogue does not make something a remake. I can barely call that a reboot. It is the deformed child of Satan and a sheep. That's what it is, it's not a remake, does not belong in a franchise. The only A Nightmare on Elm Street I choose to acknowledge as the first one from 1984 that I was committed, funny, iconic original it picked a lane and stuck to it the complete opposite of the 2010 which was all over the place scattered um let's mention that in the first one how iconic is the first time that freddy comes in when he chases tina that's what i call an entrance Freddy's entrance in 2010 was, to say the least, underwhelming. Let's not even put it down because it, it does it for itself. It, it had good intentions. The visuals are amazing. The acting was actually quite good. I liked the idea of a dark Freddy, but it missed a mark on every single point. It even altered some of the story, including the ending, and in my opinion, is this. If you're gonna change the ending, why wasn't Chris the final girl? Because she was a much stronger character in here than as he was, is neither here nor there. I'm just venting about this poor excuse of something. And I knew, I knew 
this was going to be a bad movie when we first see the iconic house of Nancy on Elm Street. And the shot does include the street sign. That was a foreshadowing about this movie really missing the mark. Another thing that I don't like, and this is a, a debate about people, Freddy Krueger, the canon Freddy Krueger is not a child molester. He's a child killer, yes. Is that bad? Yes. But he was not a child molester. And um, the choice to make him a child molester in this movie did not sit well with me. This movie was unsettling in all the wrong ways. And it is just what it is. It had like good intentions, but it felt so flat and kind of it ruined the franchise because if it had been a strong revival, it would have been amazing. But I mean, that was 2010. It's been 11 years and no movies have been made because everybody is afraid. But no, it's like, just think about it. It was horrible, period. I know this is not the perfect idea or anything, but I want to share with you what I believe the perfect revival for the franchise would be. Um, let me know down below if you agree with me, disagree with me, what we would like to see. But there's only one and only Robert England. He's a classically trained actor who brought so much personality and cheek and wit to Freddy. Nobody will compare. That Freddy is dead. So, in my opinion, this series does not need a remake. It needs a revival, a reboot. And in this new Freddy Krueger, what I want for the franchise is a much darker, completely scary, supernatural movie. No more cheek, no more one-liners, definitely no copy deaths, completely fresh from the beginning with the only common place being Elm Street, Freddy Krueger, and somewhat of his origins. I'll change his orange too and hear me out. Let me pitch it to you. So in my imagine revival, and it can be anything, but this is, I think it would make perfect sense in being contemporary. I think with the right director and producer, it can be a visually stunning movie with an underlying tone of social commentaries. So in this one, Friday Krueger would be a black man. His origin will be in the 1960s in Elm Street and there's a street where he is the only black man that lives there and around town there has been some child killings going on. Kids have been kidnapped, tortured and killed and left for dead in the abandoned factory. We'll keep that too. That real life killer does use Freddy's knife and is setting there because that's his coven. That's where he commits the killing ritualistically. So that is going on the whole street and the town. They are raised and heightened. They really want to find who this is because otherwise it's a very peaceful. Then we meet a Karen. A old spinster with nothing better to do than to live her racist life and points the finger at Freddy Krueger. She says that she saw him pull the latest victim into his car and take him away and then when he came home very late at night he looked very suspicious with blood on his clothes. Is she lying? Yes. She feels she needs to lie because she is convinced of course he's the only black man on the street. He has to be the killer. So people buy it. He's about to be arrested and the parents chase him to the factory, similar to the, the real one, because they want their own brand of justice. They want to kill him. Going to jail is not enough. So they chase him into the factory, use, you know, the nine fingers to kill him, throw him into the furnace and burn him to death. Plot twist. He was innocent, completely innocent. He wasn't even a child killer, okay? Leave that all in the 60, everybody that was involved, including the, the Karen has died, has moved on, but the lore of Freddy Krueger stays. And, and it's passed on through the generations and it grows and it grows and it grows. Meanwhile, what also grows is kind of, I know this is almost a ripoff of the grudge, but 
Freddy's spirit was never able to move on because he has so much anger knowing that he was innocent and he paid for a crime he didn't commit. So he lingers on and he festers that energy in the place where he was dead. He's like just bound to earth. And the lore continues and the teenagers always like play tricks and they say that if you summon him like candy man a bloody mary freddy will come back and do whatever you want one day this guy who is now um privileged sophomore in college who's been accused of day raping a girl and uh, their his parents are really like going out of the way to pay for the best lawyers to make sure that he gets away with it but he is innocent he didn't do this and um, he decides he has nothing to lose and this is where we also kind of fix what was wrong with Freddy's revenge this guy summons Freddy Krueger but Krueger is too weak so for the first killings of revenge, he summoned Freddy Krueger because he has plain I didn't do it just like you. I want to get revenge on everybody that was responsible. If I'm going to die, they're going to die first. Freddy is living it up and he hops into his body and the first killings is this guy doing it with Freddy's knife. But um, as it continues, Freddy gains enough energy to kill on his own all the person that someone's him needs to do is bring a personal object of the person they want killed and put in the furnace and then freddy will find through that he's waiting to their dreams kill them in their dreams because that's how it is and um go on so on and so forth however there's a plot twist this guy is actually guilty so what does freddy do he kills him and the lore is started so he becomes almost like this patron demon of the wrongly accused which opens up you don't have to come up with horrible excuses to why can he how can he get these people if all the elm street kids are dead all you have to do is uh if you wrongly accused summon him and from now on follow on with like bringing a token or something from that person bring the firmness freddy will kill it for you so in each movie of the franchise we have a completely different story background set of people the only thing they have in common is that they all wrongly accused hopefully and jury is out if all of them will actually be wrongly accused or not i know it's not quite like maybe that's just me and I know it's quite convoluted. I'm not a screen player, but what I want is a dark Freddy with no more copies and uh, fresh kills in a background. And for him, if he is a child killer, that's fine, but definitely not a child molester. I want that to be on the record. And uh, also I think it would be a great plot twist if he was actually 100% innocent. That's my pitch for a nightmare on elm street revival let me know down below what you think of it and what your pitch would be this was long tomorrow will be short promise and you know the drill guys until next time be the hummingbird see you tomorrow